っきまで歩いてたのに危ない。The Greenlandic people, they feel like actual life, the, the climate change. They feel change. the climate change. Uh -huh. For example, from year to year, there are uh, less sea ice. Uh -huh. And that means that um, usually the sea ice has been used for transportation with the dog sled. Ah, okay, okay. Like, uh, it's not a big issue here in Lulisset, uh -huh. but more north, uh, some of the towns uh -huh. and uh, Settlements they are located in small islands and yeah. then they use the sea ice uh, to trans to transport yes, uh, yes, yes. with the dog sled. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when the sea ice is more thin and uh -huh. fragile, then it's of course too dangerous to uh, okay. to ride the dog sled. Uh. Then you go out on the ice and. Um, you are fishing through this hole that you're making uh -huh, the ice, okay. but then you can't do that anymore. And then you are, uh, then you need to go with boat. But yeah, then it can also be difficult to to sail because there will still be some ice. Uh -huh. You know, it it will be difficult to sail through uh -huh. the ice, but it's too thin to uh, ride across uh -huh. or above. アザラシがいないので移動しますイエスおお。溶けてるいつの間にかさっきまで歩いてたのに危ないいや、いつけりんもヒューメッドウィハムもレインえー、like Normally it's a very dry climate, uh -huh. um, but we have more and more days with rain mm -hmm. and affects the whole infrastructure, like how you would usually uh, build cities, like when there are more rain, you would need a, a canal. Build. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. The water go run through. Exactly. Okay, okay. So actually these buildings are made one I think climate. situation about the, the dry weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's get humid so they have to change their yeah. system. Yeah. Okay. Like it's not right now but like uh -huh. in the future um, it will affect how we build like also uh, like tree is the main material for building. Uh -huh, yes, um, yes, yes. But uh -huh. if it gets more humid then uh -huh. it will Okay. <laughs> it will probably not be the best solution no. for probably affect the materials we use and how we think of infrastructure. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Special. Brand new. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 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 
And I'm a, a doctor of conservation biology. So the Greenland Institute of Natural Resources is the only natural resource institute in all of Greenland. And it is an independent organization that serves as an advisory to the Greenlandic government okay. for the management of land and fisheries and climate change related issues. The biggest issues that we're experiencing are, particularly in the north, climate change um, caused issues such as erosion, beach erosion. A lot of our communities are right on the coastlines. Yes, yes. And we're having a lot of issue with not only uh, sea level rise due to climate change, but also, of course, with the ice action. So the ice is protecting a lot of the shores in the far north. Mm -hmm. But as it breaks up and is less consistent, um, we're seeing also that the coastlines of particular places are eroding quite fast, sometimes even 10 meters, 20 meters a year. So this is a very uh, important effect on a lot of communities, particularly in Alaska on the Pacific side. So we're seeing a lot of things that are related to this, right? So, for example, we're having a lot of increased shipping in this region okay. of the world Be due to climate change because the Northwest Passage is now ice-free in the summer months. And really? They pass, yeah, Already? They, yeah, they pass through uh, the Davis Strait here on the way between Greenland and Canada. And then, um, this is not the only issue, which is, of course, the shipping of material, but also the ice-free areas are opening up to the extent that we're having even more increased tourism because currently Greenland doesn't have any regulations um, for the cruise ship industry and you can sort of just see that cruise ships go wherever they like. This is a problem of course for the environment but also for communities because the communities also have a lot of cultural history and it does yeah. have impacts to the hunting and fishing for different communities and you never want to have a situation where the community is upset with the tourism industry because that's very counterproductive in a country like this where you know, the tourism industry can bring a lot of income to people. So, this is kind of the open shipping lane now. Uh-huh, yes. So this is, of course, the Northwest Passage, all of this. But um, here through the Davis Strait, there have been more and more ships coming in through this way, and especially exploratory um, ships. They, they, they come any number of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, is it uh, happening in uh, two years or three years things? So you know, when I was growing up, we never had ships that came this way no? in the north because okay. there was too much sea ice. Where I come from, we have eight, nine, nine months of sea ice a year. This is uh, right here. This area is called Pikula Sorswak. <laughs> it is one of the last places in the Arctic that will not ice over in the winter time. So it's a safe haven for a lot of species. So a lot of animals, wildlife come here to stay in the winter time. Mm -hmm. But as the increase in traffic and pollutants related to the shipping industry and the cruise ship industry, we're going to, of course, need to address. We are still trying, I think, to figure out a lot of these issues, not just here in Greenland, but all across the Arctic. Yeah. What our standards are for different industries, but also what are our standards for different conservation mm -hmm. issues. When the human break taboo rules, the mother of the sea gets angry, and she prevents sending the animals to surface, which meant the human gets starving. <laughs>